Hello, everybody. Welcome to our webinar today. Uh, this is the second day of our webinars, and today we're going to tell a little bit more about the practical solutions you can use in uh, your scenarios. And first of all, uh, uh, welcome everybody who is joining us today. I am Alexander Maslov, uh, the Video Transport Product Manager from MediaLux. And let's get started. Yesterday we already showed up uh, all of our products, uh, but today I am going to show you a little bit more details how we can use it for some specific scenarios. And let's start with introduction of uh, our products once again so you can get you even more familiar what we have so let me share my screen once again yeah so video transport consists of uh, a few products uh, which can cover a few of uh, possible options. Uh, one of it is remote contribution. If you have uh, remote guests or hosts uh, and they're connecting from their homes. Another one is uh, multi-camera remote production. Then you uh, basically just reducing the cost by sending the less people uh, on site and doing all your video mixing uh, at your home studio and just uh, sending the cameramen and the cameras at the field for the sports or any other events. Another option is to use our solution for monitoring of the feeds and some kind of collaborations uh, between the director of color, color correctors and any other staff who have to get the access to the live video source you are being working on, like uh, uh, Derek, uh, director would like to uh, take a look over the shoulder what the editor is doing or, or any other uh, production specialists can share the same video feed. And the last one is uh, making the virtual conference. Uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, issues recently with uh, traveling across the globe and uh, one of the ways to meet together is to use some kind of virtual environment to do some uh, virtual events and our solutions allows, allows you to uh, make it more convenient for the uh, broadcast people to bring the uh, real broadcast quality picture uh, into your vision mixtures and make the uh, basically uh, live broadcast of uh, online event. And the first product we are going to cover is video publisher and VT receiver application. Uh, those two applications uh, are just a simple sender and receiver application. The first one, VT publisher, is used to stream the feeds. For example, here I have a plenty of sources at my location here. And all you have to do to send it from one uh, place to another, just click publish on any of the source and at the other end, which can be across the globe, you immediately see, so you see those two green lights here, those two sources I have already published from my one location. At any other location, you immediately see the same sources listed and you can select the protocol which is going to be used for transmission and some kind of buffering settings. Uh, and you just select the feed, uh, make the proper settings. Uh, after the handshake, uh, you are getting the preview of the feed at your location. Uh, example, let's switch to this one. Yeah, here is it. So it takes some time to make a handshake and after that, you can select to output it to any uh, SDI cards or NDI output, also virtual, uh, which stands for a uh, virtual device at your machine uh, that you can use like a normal webcam at any other application. So you're just selecting the source, click start output, and it's immediately available at uh, your network as an NDI source or as a SDI signal at the output if you have selected any DECLINK, AG, or MegaVel card. Uh, let's do the same for another source. It will also take some time to make a handshake. Yeah, 
is it. It's another feed from my studio that I can also output. And it's pretty straightforward. You don't have to mess around with uh, any network settings. Uh, the way it works is that uh, two of those applications are talking uh, to our central uh, server, which is controlling the uh, establishment of the connection. So it knows about all your locations and all the video feeds which you have published. And you can select any of them and uh, start outputting. Uh, at the same time, uh, it doesn't, uh, the video feed, it doesn't really go through our server. The connection goes from point A to point, point B directly. All you have to do uh, is basically our uh, server is used only to make this kind of uh, finding out where the point A and point B is and how to establish the connection. Uh, you can use the preview to monitor the video feed. You can also click on full screen to show it up. Uh, and you can also monitor the audio. Uh, so basically it's uh, the way you can implement any remote production uh, type of uh, application. Uh, if you have uh, dozens of cameras, like I have a plenty of Declan inputs in my machine. So uh, right now nothing is connected to it, but I, in a uh, general case, you can uh, select all of them and publish it and receive at the other end. And uh, to uh, maintain the synchronicity between the different streams, you can set the fixed latency settings so uh, that all of the streams uh, will have exactly the same buffer settings. Uh, and th this will allow you to keep uh, different feeds in sync between each other. And another setting for the buffer uh, is that you can set real time if you need really, really low latency, uh, but uh, it will kind of sacrifice the uh, ability of our application to uh, cope with any errors uh, during transmission, or if you are changing to any of more reliable settings of the buffer, it will allow us uh, some time to get the video feed. Uh, if uh, any of the errors appear during transmission, we can uh, correct those errors and uh, retransmit uh, any of the errors uh, or missing packets. Uh, let's go on to the next application. Uh, uh, we have been already talking about the bringing the guests uh, into our environment uh, who can basically be at home. So the, there are two options, uh, one of which is uh, our web guest uh, application, uh, which is basically just a web browser based uh, app. Uh, you can send the link uh, to any of the guests and they can connect from any device. Or there is a specific Windows uh, based VT guest application that allows you to use a Windows machine uh, and input video from any webcam or uh, any supported Blackmagic AGA uh, card or even NDI source of the network. Uh, at the same time, our uh, person will be able to see the studio feed as well. So let's uh, take a look how uh, VT uh, WebGuest works first. So clicking back, going back to our uh, VT publisher, first thing you have to uh, select is what is going to be the studio feed you are going to use uh, to output to your guests. Uh, so let's stop all of those and we are not going to use it anymore. So this is my studio feed and I just click here and uh, there is a copy web guest URL link here. So I'm just copying it from here, going into the browser and I already have uh, a few browser windows open with the same URL uh, to mimic uh, that I have free guests. Uh, I've done it uh, before just to make all the different names and all of them. So right now I'm just clicking start uh, at all of those tabs. And this is my guest three. This is my guest two. And this is guest one. So all of those three come up at the VT receiver as separate guests. And I can output all of those to NDI or SDI cards, uh, as well as 
any other source we have uh, uh, looked at before. Um, probably you noticed that we are using WebRTC protocol to receive uh, web guests, uh, since it's the only protocol which is available to be used in the web browsers. And we are using it uh, to transmit the image to the guests. Uh, as you have seen, the guests see the studio feed coming from the studio. And at the same time, uh, return feed from the camera is going back to the studio. So uh, I can show you quickly how I can use it uh, later. So I have outputted, let's output all of those into the NDI feeds. And I'm using the vMix uh, software uh, vision mixer here. So I have all of those guest one, guest two, and guest three. To distinguish between them, I have used some kind of different color grading for them. So I have red, green, and blue guests here. And as you can see, uh, I have this kind of uh, multi-viewer uh, with a different uh, uh, persons. I can also switch it to the output. Uh, probably I can stop share so you can see it full screen at my window here. And I can easily switch from window to window and it works like magic with all of those guests participating at my show. And no actual setup uh, was necessary to make it uh, appear into my show and going live. Uh, I spent like five minutes to uh, make the setup and that's it. Pretty straightforward, easy to do. And uh, let me show you one more cool feature which we have just uh, about to release that now all of those guests can be uh, remotely controlled from the central location. So uh, no matter if it's in the VT publisher or if it's in VT receiver, you can just right click and uh, go into web guest settings and you have the guest name, the bit rate and all the different settings which is available here. Uh, let me show on guest one. So all of those settings I can go into the publisher and, for example, change the resolution to, for example, uh, change it to this. And you can immediately see that if the resolution have changed uh, at the remote guest uh, settings. Uh, it allows you to uh, control it really easy from your central side, uh, even if, like right now, I have changed to 4 by 3 uh, aspect ratio and it was just uh, switched straight away without waiting for anything, so coming back. So it's pretty straightforward and easy to use. You can also change the name and any other settings. Uh, let's move on to another application which is called VT Guest I mentioned before. So uh, instead of using the web-based contribution, uh, you can use uh, VT Guest app, which is basically uh, having the same functionality as uh, our uh, web guest based solution, but it's a little bit more robust in terms of the uh, reliability since it's using our uh, proprietary protocol to send the video and it's uh, able to cope with any uh, network issues. And all you have to do, uh, like you did with uh, web guests, uh, in this case, you have to copy access ID and send it to the uh, remote guest and he's just uh, putting it here in the access ID uh, field and then selecting the camera he's going to use, selecting the microphone, click start. Okay, now let's take a look at our receiver app. So at the rece receiver app, I got this VT guest uh, feed and it takes some time to, to handshake and then it will also appear. So this is my feed uh, here and uh, the studio feed can be shown here. Probably I got the dark feed at uh, my studio feed. But never mind, basically the studio feed is going here. And uh, this is covering all of your scenarios with a, 
uh, web guest or VT guest contribution. And it's uh, pretty easy to use and uh, kind of uh, betting, getting better and better with all the different releases we have come uh, in the last three months. We made a lot of changes and a lot of updates. Uh, one of the coolest features which is coming uh, that uh, if for any reason uh, your remote contributor forgot to unmute the microphone or the camera, uh, now we can also control of those settings remotely. So you can just uh, go into the settings here. Uh, I'm using uh, not the latest better right now for this demo, but uh, there will uh, be also uh, two options to control uh, also turning off and on the cameras at the release which is going to be this week. Uh, hopefully tomorrow, but if it will take some more time to test then until the end of the week. And uh, one of the cool features uh, of our application, probably for the MCR control, is that all of those uh, streams is also available at our main central. Uh, let me stop all of those guests so it doesn't cloud anything here. So. So all the different locations, uh, like in my case, uh, this is my machine here, and this is another office machine. Uh, I can see all the sources available uh, and can uh, stream from one to another, just selecting where I want it to send, like I have my feed, I would like it to be sent to an office, selecting the codec, uh, the latency settings I have already described before, click stream, it will take some time to make a handshake. And after that, the video feed will arrive. Just, I'll give it a few seconds. Yeah, here is it. And one of the additional feature, which I haven't covered yet, is that uh, you can also, in VT Publisher, uh, you can right click and there is a uh, copy or open preview URL, which allows you to open uh, the preview of the feed in the uh, web uh, kind of environment. And at uh, this central cloud-based control panel, there is also an option to uh, just right click here and you are having the same one uh, at uh, web browser. You can also copy the preview URL and send it to someone else who would like to monitor the feed. There is also some statistics uh, about the encoding and frame rate. Uh, you can see that my machine is powerful enough to encode uh, six, 530 bit, uh, 600 uh, uh, frames per second. Uh, and this kind of cloud-based panel is really useful if you, have, if you have a lot of locations. And if you don't have anyone on site uh, to monitor any of those VT publisher or receiver applications to start or stop the streams, you can do it centrally. And you can also uh, run uh, VT publisher and receiver application in kind of uh, uh, unattended uh, way. You can just uh, use our VT server application, which is just uh, application without any user interface at all, but you can set up as a Windows servers and you can just run it uh, instead of VT publisher and VT receiver. And it will also appear at this interface as the endpoint uh, you can receive or send the signals to and from. Uh, by the way, to access all of the uh, different sources at the location, you just have to go to all of those sources and you can select any of the source you would like to get published. Uh, for example, let me use my vmix output. I'm just clicking publish, start publishing. And yeah, here is it. Basically it's the same one uh, I have in my uh, vmix output free. Uh, and you can do the same for any HDI cards uh, at your locations as well. And the last thing I haven't covered uh, is regarding the uh, audio setup for all of those uh, guest uh, things. And it comes into the play uh, more seriously if you have dozens of web guests and you are trying to make some kind of uh, web-based uh, contribution uh, with uh, uh, a goal to have 
some kind of uh, uh, virtual event uh, and still would like to broadcast it uh, in the uh, broadcast quality. Uh, we already showed you how you can send the web guest, how you can receive the guest, but uh, one of uncovered uh, feature is the creation of mix miners for all of those guests so they can hear each other and you don't have to provide a return feed for any, uh, every guest uh, to make the uh, mix miners for uh, every one of them. So you can just go into the settings for the specific studio feed you are going to use a studio feed and there is an option to enable the mix minus settings here. And once you enable it, uh, all of the guests uh, connected to the same web guest URL uh, will basically share the room and hear each other. From your studio, you just have to provide the total mix minus. So it's the audio feed without any um, guests at all. So you have, if you have any video playback or the hosts uh, at your central studio, this is the only audio you have to send uh, to the guests. All of the other guests uh, uh, at the same room uh, will be uh, mixed uh, in an exclusion with uh, the only one who is actually listening in you know, this feed. So the proper mix minus will be created for all the different guests. At the same time, at your uh, studio, you will get the clean uh, audio feed from each guest. Uh, so no audio mixing is done on that. Uh, so you are just getting the uh, straight feed from their microphone and you can mix your own program uh, the way you used to do it uh, at uh, any kind of any other environment. Uh, one of the additional feature I would like to cover here that sometimes you would like to swap the audio uh, uh, which is present at your feed with some any other uh, audio source. Uh, what you can do is uh, also at the settings tab there is an option to select external audio and this is lists all of different audio devices you can use and once you select any of the external audio source what is basically being done, let me switch it off first so I can show you that the original uh, audio had only two channels of audio at my NDI feed. And my, once I go into the settings and select uh, some additional audio here, like probably line in from uh, one of my Black Edge cards and click OK, you can see that now there are four channels here. So there are two uh, original channels and another two uh, which we are currently getting from the line-in device. And if you want to uh, keep only those uh, uh, line-in uh, audio and uh, basically swap the original audio which was present, you can use audio channel mask uh, and type in something like three comma uh, four. That will mean that from the original uh, audio plus all of the external audio, I want uh, channel three and four to be selected and only those two channels being sent uh, on the line. And I click OK and now you see there are only two channels being transmitted. And what I did uh, using this three and four uh, setting for the channel must be basically I discarded the first two channels and using only channel three and four. And it can be really useful for different types of scenarios uh, if you would like to have the same audio for, uh, and send it uh, same video and send different audio to the different destinations uh, then you can uh, output NGI uh, several times and then select uh, what audio channels from this uh, original NGI source you would like like sending one and two to one destination and three and four to another destination uh, uh, but in this case, you will have to output all of those uh, different NGI, so it will come uh, like a separate source into our application, uh, having like eight channels of audio originally, and then we are selecting at one source, I will select channel one and two, and the second one, I will select channel three and four, and etc. And basically, that's it uh, in terms of the different uh, options, how you can uh, use an, uh, our application to resolve uh, some of the base scenarios. Of course, uh, you can mix and match uh, all the different features uh, to your exact production. Uh, 
you may use only some of the features or uh, use all of them. It all depends on the way you are using the software and your actual video and audio and network setup. Um, as already mentioned, uh, we are uh, compatible with uh, Black Blackmagic, AG, and Magival cards, as well as uh, any NDI source. And uh, you can also use uh, NDI uh, PTZ cameras uh, and remotely control uh, PTZ uh, if you are sending the NDI from one location uh, to another location uh, and then using, uh, for example, uh, NDI studio monitor, uh, you can use the uh, built-in uh, PTZ remote control feature and it will be transferred through transferred our solution to the remote uh, camera and you can control how it will work. Uh, so, looks like it's pretty much covered everything uh, I wanted to tell you today. Uh, we are going to go to, into the Q&A session. Uh, well, one of the latest uh, thing I would like to mention is how you actually can start uh, using our software. So uh, you can go into vtmedialooks.com uh, site and you will get to this registration page. Uh, you can click registration, enter your email, define your password for later on using to enter into our cloud solution and all the details and just click register and you will get an access uh, to the trial license uh, that will allow you to uh, test uh, our applications and uh, in the after you get registered uh, you can go into this kind of web cloud about uh, web-based cloud panel and un uh, under my account page there is an option to download the license which you will have to use uh, with our application. And uh, there are also two options to download our software. Uh, there are two buttons here. The first one is to download the latest release version. And also for those of you who would like to uh, test the latest feature we are working on, uh, uh, you can also download the better version. Uh, this is still better. So. Uh, this is a uh, kind of work in progress and uh, we are not guaranteeing that the better version uh, works uh, in the best way, but uh, at least it can show you uh, what we are working on and if there are any features uh, which you are waiting for, uh, then you can just use a uh, better version uh, for your kind of testing of what is coming. And also there is a link to our support page. Uh, you can contact our sales support or technical support and also we are working hard to uh, make of the dates uh, to our uh, documentation and so feel free to check our documentation page uh, and uh, usually most of the pre-class question is answered there but if you still have some kind of uh, issues you can always uh, write to us uh, and you can personally reach me uh, at my email account uh, alexm at medialooks.com and I'm always available to answer any of the questions uh, and um, don't hesitate to uh, write me an email I'll be ready to help you with any questions you have uh, Okay, that's it for now. Let's switch to Q&A session. Uh, the first question is, would it be possible to watch the seminar later on demand? Uh, yes, uh, we are going to uh, give an access to a recording of this uh, webinar later. Uh, so, any other questions? Anything else you would like me to show you today? Or looks like there is not so much activity at the chat or uh, Q&A session. Yeah, okay. I'd like to understand the new SRT feature that enables the transfer to send to any SRT, SRT compatible device or application. Uh, 
So we are using our own proprietary implementation on top of SRT, uh, which allows us to uh, make a forward error correction and some of the other features, which is not part of the standard SRT. For that reason, we are not directly compatible with uh, SRT, uh, the standard SRT and uh, the standard SRT encoders. Uh, but uh, one of the products which is coming, which is not released yet, but uh, hopefully will be released uh, later this year. Uh, it will be called VT Gateway, which will allow you to get interoperability with uh, standard SRT as well as uh, RTMP uh, protocol and probably some others. Uh, so the way it will work, uh, that it will uh, be like a separate node at the network, uh, which will uh, receive all of the standard SRT or RTMP uh, streams and then properly repackage it to be sent via a video transport protocol into any of our applications and same for the reverse uh, path. Uh, so you will be able to use VT gateway to output to RTMP platforms for streaming or any standard SRT uh, decoders. Uh, can you work with NGI and NGI HX? Yes, both of them are supported. So uh, we can receive NDI and NDI HX uh, and we can output uh, NDI. Uh, basically, we are just using the uh, NDI SDK on Windows platform. Uh, as long as the feature is supported by NDI uh, SDK itself, then it's supported inside our software. When using VT guest app, do you need to send a license file to the guest? Can you send just the app to the guest or do they need the entire package? Uh, you can strip down uh, the package uh, to include uh, only a, a few DLLs and uh, VT guest app. You still have to send the license file, which is, but you can use uh, not the main one, but uh, there is a partner license, which can be used uh, to connect only to your uh, environment. And the partner license will allow him to receive only the feed. Uh, you specifically send the key for not any other feeds. Um, Alex, all the connections are point to point. Uh, they do not rely on the cloud server. Is this correct? Yes, uh, all the connections are uh, point to point directly. It's not redirected through our server. Uh, there is uh, one of the feature which is a part of VT gateway, which will allow us to establish connections uh, via a VT gateway in case if uh, the direct link is not available for any reasons so like the firewalls uh, rules or um, kind of NAT setups uh, uh, that uh, does not allow us to establish the direct connection. In this case, we can use uh, VT gateway uh, as kind of a uh, middle point to uh, redirect the streams. Uh, like we already do for uh, turn, uh, we are using turn for WebRTC connections. If there is no direct link available, then it goes through turn servers. And same will work for SRT streams, but uh, most of the time the uh, feed is going from a point A to point B directly without using of our cloud uh, servers for any kind of uh, redirection of the streams. Uh, I'm excited about the VT gateway, looking forward to the release. Uh, actually, we are already in the release phase, so uh, uh, the only uh, difference between the release version and the beta version is that in beta version, there are some features which we are still uh, doing the tests uh, for, but uh, basically uh, you can download uh, uh, a release or beta version and use the uh, VT uh, straight away. Uh, oh, sorry, you were talking about VT gateway. Uh, yeah, in terms of the uh, gateway, yeah, it's still under the beta testing uh, for us internally and we are going to roll it out first to redirect our own streams. And after that, we will make the public release of this uh, feature. So it will basically, uh, the cloud-based platform, it will appear like another uh, location which you can use to stream to and stream from. Uh, and it will also an option to install any of those uh, uh, on-prem, so if you would like to use your own infrastructure, then you can roll off uh, VT Gateway 
like you currently can if you buy the license for on-prem edition you can uh, install uh, the signaling server at your infrastructure it can be any dedicated server or any cloud uh, uh, instance uh, we can roll it on uh, there and it can also allow you to do the white labeling of uh, uh, our web-based apps so you can uh, put your own logo in. so if you are ordering the white labeled uh, version of our software then you can even customize the, the look uh, of the application uh, for your web guests uh, will vt transport work over private network like to radio connected uh, Yes, uh, it uh, can be done, but uh, for that case, you will have to install our on-prem edition at your network so that the signaling server is not on our uh, cloud instances, but at your uh, private local network. We already have uh, several clients who is using uh, uh, those uh, on-prem editions at their uh, really, really uh, private networks not connected to the internet itself. Uh, it uh, makes it a little bit harder for us to make any update, uh, updates on their servers, uh, but uh, in general it works. Uh, and uh, yes, this is something you can also uh, do if you buy on-prem edition. And a few words about licensing. So uh, the way licensing works is that uh, we have uh, the packs of a number of channels you would like to use simultaneously. Uh, you can license like uh, five uh, channels uh, for one year or three months uh, period. And this is the cheapest license we have uh, is uh, five licenses for three months. Uh, of course, on buying the yearly subscription is a bit cheaper. And then you go up from there, you can buy 10 channels, 20 channels, or you can contact us if you need even more and the licensing uh, structure is uh, subscription-based so you have uh, to pay uh, at the quarterly or yearly uh, subscription uh, scam uh, for on-prem edition uh, there is also uh, upfront fee for the installation fee and to uh, make all of those uh, different settings to work at your on-prem installation and the white labeling is also uh, uh, priced differently. Uh, so, any more questions? Okay, I'll wait for another one minute. Uh, and if there are no more questions, we will wrap up this uh, uh, webinar today. I hope it was useful for you and stay in touch with us. So let us know what you think and how your uh, testing of our application is going. And we also appreciate any feedback of any new features you would like us to implement uh, or uh any new scenarios you would like to use our application uh, in and we are working really hard to uh, make the new features available with any new release and uh, we are trying to uh, make our clients happy uh thank you ricardo for your uh good uh, good words about my presentation uh, it's always uh, nice to receive some feedback. By the way, uh, probably you noticed that uh, it's for the third, uh, it's the second day in a row, but for the first time I moved away from my home office uh, with my uh, famous gray background. Uh, now I'm sitting at uh, our main office here and some of the people were uh, walking around. Uh, some are still on duty, some are living. Uh, it's already uh, 40 minutes past six here in uh, our office uh, and if our people are still working uh, to make the greatest product for you. <laughs> uh, you're welcome, Ricardo. 
Uh, okay, if there are no more questions, then thanks uh, everybody for coming uh, and see you next time at any of our webinars or uh, drop us an email uh, personally to me or to our sales or support team if you have any specific questions. Uh, we will be glad to help you out with uh, any questions. Thanks a lot for coming. See you next time.